To learn any of these skills, one of the most important things is to practice, but for that you need good data. So in this video, I'm going to show you all of the resources I use to download real world data completely for free, so you can level up your data skills. Let's get into it. The first and most generic option is called Kaggle.com. You can see it right here and we just want to head over to the area where it says datasets. In here you're gonna find a ton of different datasets, you can see some trending ones, benchmarks, etc. And the nice thing is that they have upvotes, so that means that you can really tell what's a good dataset or a bad one. Let's suppose that we want to look for Airbnbs in Italy. We're just gonna click on this first one. And you can see on the top right hand side we have the download button. For it we just need to sign in and then you'll be able to download any dataset. It's also got some context down below to explain a bit more about this dataset and you can actually preview it. Let's suppose I go inside of this part, the Bergamo, and I can go over to the listings. Within it you can see that I can take a look at all of the different columns and even go for each specific row. As you notice here on the right, it's got a ton of different tables in it. So this is great to practice something like relationships in Power BI, where you want to connect different tables. Now Kaggle isn't an official government website, and so the datasets aren't curated. If you want perhaps more accurate data from the real world, it makes sense to go to the government websites. Like over here we have the US government, which is called data.gov. You can see here that they have 300,000 datasets available, and we can sort by their most viewed one to get a better idea. Within it, you'll notice that they're sorted by state, like electric vehicle population data here by state. You've got some by city, as well as on a federal level. If we click on side of one, like the air quality over here in New York, you'll notice here it doesn't have that much of a description compared to Kaggle. You can't really preview the data. All you can really do is go ahead and download it. The main downside to data.gov is that it's only focused on the US, there's not much in terms of worldwide data, but for that there is another resource called UN data. So here it is, it's the United Nations data, you can see the URL on the top left, and within it you'll notice that we can filter not just by specific countries here, but also by certain regions like the entire world, or specific parts of a continent. You can of course search things too, but if you want some suggestions, you can head over to data marts. These are basically different groups, so you'll notice that there's all of these plus signs on the left. Let's suppose we go for the demographic statistics database. We can click on that plus sign, and within it we get a ton of different information. Let's suppose we go for divorces by duration of marriage. We can either preview that data, so you can see here what that looks like, or we can click on view data to get more detail. You'll notice, for example, in Albania, it seems like divorces are more common when the duration of the marriage is relatively low, at least back in 1991. Within it, we can actually filter a lot more. Here you can see the total number of records. You can also sort the order or even select which specific columns you want to download. So far, we've just been looking at real world data, but maybe you don't care about that side. You just want a specific type of data with a certain number of columns and a certain number of rows. You can create that completely from scratch fairly quickly using ChatGPT. So let's take a look at that. Here I am in ChatGPT. I'm currently just on the free version and I can type here the precise script of what I want. Here you can see I've written create a sample data set of 100 rows. So that's nice and clear and I want columns on each of these specific variables. So it's the ID number, name, job title, region, sales and salary. And this should be in tabular format, so in table format. And I want to download the dataset so I can practice it in Excel. So hopefully it understands that it should be compatible with Excel here. Let's go ahead and run that. So you can see it's generated the dataset and now we're ready to download it. I'm just going to press on the download button and it should be here. Sample dataset is what it's called. Let me open it up in Excel. I'm just going to enable the editing and you can see that. Let's see how many rows it's got. It's got 101 because of that title part. So it's a total of 100 rows of data. It's got the name, like we said, the job title, region, sales, and the salary. So it's done exactly what I asked it for. But one thing to keep in mind is that the script has to be very precise. If you keep it vague, like you don't tell it which columns you want or how many rows of data you want, it's probably not going to give you the right answer. Also, it's important to tell it here that you want it in a table format 
instead of all just listed in one row and that you're actually looking to download this data set we could go further and make some modifications like actually i want 500 rows instead of 100 and so it's really quite a versatile tool the one key downside in my opinion is with very large data sets like 1 million rows there it really struggles to come up with the right data after downloading the data sets if you want to learn in-demand data skills like excel or power bi you can check out our data analyst program it consists of five individual courses and over 300 lessons First, in Excel, you learn the best practices for formatting, formulas, and charts, and then you'll apply your skills with real-life case studies, from data cleaning to building a dynamic financial model. Then, in Power BI, you'll dive into data visualization and create interactive dashboards to extract maximum insights from your data. Thirdly, in SQL, you'll work with larger databases, writing SQL queries, and even connecting those databases with applications like Excel and Power BI. Fourth, in Python, we'll start with programming basics and eventually advance to analyzing real crime data in Los Angeles and even building our first machine learning model to predict housing prices. Finally, in VBA and macros, you learn to automate tasks like generating pivot tables, PNL reports, and much more. So head over to the link in the description below to join our data analyst program now and gain the skills you need to thrive in today's data-driven world. For those that are interested in datasets for finance, by far the most common resource is Edgar. You can see it right here. You can just type Edgar full text search or something like that. And it's this very first one over here. Basically, the SEC over here is the Securities and Exchange Commission. They're the regulator for US public companies. So you can find pretty much any US company here and their official filings. So I can type something like Amazon. It's this very first one that comes up here. And within it, we can go ahead and try to find their actual financial statements. Let's go over to form. And within this area on the left, we're looking for one called the 10K. That's the annual report. Click on that. And we want to go for the most recent one. It would be this one right here. Let's go ahead and go to open document to see what that's like. You can see this actually has almost 100 pages detailing all of Amazon's key business factors. So you can see here, it's got things like what are their key risk factors, what are their executives, and more importantly here in the center, we've got the financial statements and supplementary data. Let's go ahead and click on that. And you can see here, there's the cash flow statement for Amazon. We've got the income statement. So you can see exactly how much they made in revenue. It's this figure right here for 2023 all the way to the actual net income that they reported, which is 30,000. Well, it's actually 30 billion because it's in millions over here. But you might be wondering, how do I go from this PDF file to actually bringing it into Excel or some other platform? Well, for that, we can go back to the original tab. And instead of going to open document, go to open filing. When you do that, it's going to open up this area and you want to click on interactive data here on the left. Once you do, you'll notice there's the view Excel document option. So that's the one that you want to click on. And once you open it up, it's going to have all of the financial data for Amazon. Here it is, and it's got a ton of information, not just on the cash flow statement, the income statement like we showed you over here, but also pretty much any other table of financial data that they had. You can see it really goes on for quite a bit. So far, the data sets we've been looking at are fairly corporate or serious. So let's go over some more fun ones. And for that, I think Data Hub is great. Over here, you can see there's datahub.io and we can head over to collections. Within this area, you can find some more fun data sets, like for example, some related to movies and TV over here, as well as this one on football. Let's click on that to see it a bit better. If I scroll further down, you'll notice we have some data on World Cups, as well as the key football or soccer in the US. You can see there's the English Premier League one. So let's click inside of that. And if we scroll down, we have data for each of the specific seasons, all the way going back to the 90s over here, 93, 94. Let's say I click on the most recent, 2024, 25, and we can preview kind of what that data looks like and download it as a CSV if we want to. So far, with all the resources I've shown you, hopefully you've been able to find some data sets that you like. But if that's not the case, there is one place that we can go to, which is the Google dataset search. Let's click inside of that. And this is basically like a search browser only for datasets. So let's suppose we go for population 
world population 2024, something like that works for us. You'll notice that instead of taking us to a specific data set, what it does is it browses for different data sets and then you can click inside of it and find them in there. So essentially it's like a search engine and if you can't find any in here, then probably you can't really find them anywhere else. What's nice about this is that you can filter out for free data sets and you can even change things like, hey, what's the download format that I want? Do I want it in a table? So that would include CSV, Excel, etc. Or do we want it maybe in a document like a Word doc or a PDF? So there's a lot of filtering that's available here. You can even make sure that your usage rights, so you have the right license to use the specific data set, which can sometimes be important. By now, you've hopefully found the right data set for you, and the next step would be to convert it into a visual. The problem is, if you're just staring at a blank sheet of Excel, it's quite hard to get inspired. Same thing goes here in Power BI, if you just have the starting dashboard, it's quite hard to get a good idea of what you would want to make. That's why a resource like dribble.com comes quite handy. This is actually a page where you can find different designers, but in my opinion, it's quite useful to get inspiration. So we can look here for a dashboard, for instance, click on that. And within it, you can really start to see some very sleek dashboards from professional designers, so you can get a better idea. For instance, let's suppose I click on this one over here, and we get an idea that the logo should be maybe on the top left. We can have the navigation all on the left hand side. And then on the right, we have the KPIs. Also, they've added some shapes behind each of these charts to make it stand out. If we compare that to some of the dashboards that I've made, like this one in this video over here, you can see that I have a similar navigation on the left hand side. I've also got the KPIs and some shapes to make each of the different charts stand out. If you're not entirely convinced by the options there are in Dribbble, another good resource is to use Adobe Stock. So over here in Adobe Stock, I'm gonna look for a dashboard again, hit enter, and hopefully there's a few more options. You can see a lot of these are much more office-like, so maybe this is a more useful resource. We can click on them to get a better idea, so it's more zoomed in here. You can go as far as to download it as a JPEG if you wanted. Now that you know where you can find all of these resources, the next step would be to download it, to analyze it, and eventually to visualize it. You can learn all of these three steps with this video over here, or by taking our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.